Good day, my fine feathered, feathered friends. Fine fe feathered friends. Fine feathered friends. Fine feathered friends. Fine feathered friends. Fine feathered friends. Yeah, I can't say that fast five times in a row. Oh well. Yes, I'm not a genius. Which is fucking news to me. Anyways, um, yeah, I have had a bit of an absence, and um, uh, yeah, I, I want to assure you that. You know, I am here, I'm fighting the good fight, and I don't plan to stop anytime soon, um, but, uh, yeah, I just, um, I just had to deal with a lot of real bullshit, I won't even get into it, some of it, I, I don't even think I can legally get into it, all I can say is this, I'm being persecuted for being born with depression, and they're using it as an excuse to take away my fucking rights as a human being. Um, it's really despicable, um, but, uh, otherwise, uh, here's some fun trip reports for you, you know, I, uh, I really, I've done a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of work on the guitar, um, like hours and hours and hours each day practicing, you know, if I'm not doing this class, if I'm not, uh, you know, or, well, I mean, I should phrase that. A different way because that makes it sound like I'm deliberately not going to class because I am going to class. I mean, when I'm not in class or when I'm not handing out resumes trying to get a legitimate job, which you know gets shut down in every interview once they find out I'm on disability because you know I get it, it's a liability and all that. But uh, yeah, so I'm trying to take whatever work I can get, you know, it's under the table and still trying to get resumes out and all this jazz and. Uh, yeah, so when I'm not doing that, I'm practicing guitar like crazy, exercising, working out like, like I really be, you know, hitting it hard, uh, you know, put on an extra five pounds of muscle in the last little while, but, um, you know, benzo tape has been kicking fucking shit out of me, man, um, uh, like it's, it's, it's nasty, it's real nasty, um, but, uh, one of the unfortunate side effects of that, um, which, you know, um, is really, really disappointing to me, and it may seem like, oh, third world, or sorry, first world problems, but um, I don't think I can do macro doses of psychedelics that, you know, are, like, last, like, three hours or longer anymore. Why? Because, um... Uh, a couple of days ago, I did a macro dose of 2CB, very, very strong 2CB. This stuff is like, it's like twice the strength of like most 2CB out there. Um, but I mean, it's 2CB, so like, you know, it's very easy to handle. I find personally, if it gets really intense in terms of visuals, like I'm still very lucid mentally. Um, and I mixed it with them all. I did a Nexus flip, and I just don't think I can do MDMA anymore either. It sucks, because it's like, how am I going to fucking party? I can't drink, I can't do MDMA, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to take psychedelics at parties, because I don't like to, you know. Uh, the farthest I'll go is taking 2CD because of that limited headspace. Um, you know, uh, what, what am I going to do? Fucking cocaine? Uh, I, you know, I'd rather not, you know, there's, uh, I, I have many ethical issues with that drug, um, and also just, you know, a personal history of shooting it into my veins when I was an addict, and, uh, although I have no desire to do that, I don't want to risk temptation, um, and also cocaine's fucking expensive, let's be real, um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, I got two trip reports for you, because, like, the psychedelics I can still do, I find, is I microdose, uh, psilocybin every day, that's fine, doesn't really help with my depression, um, but what it does help with is it helps, um, in that, uh, uh, it, it helps with my focus, um, I find the niacin flush, uh, I think it helps with the benzo taper, like, uh, or, sorry, more specifically, the benzo withdrawal symptoms, because when you're in benzo withdrawal, essentially what's happening is you have too much GABA-8 that's, like, just building up behind a receptor that is damaged, and that receptor is not processing the GABA, and GABA is, even though it's 
But like, if you take a benzo and you feel relaxed, you drink alcohol and you feel relaxed because it works on GABA. Uh, you know, there's GABA A, GABA B. Um, but GABA A is primarily like the one that makes people feel good and feel sedated and all that. It's, it, it's still considered an excitatory chemical in the brain because it is crucial for neurotransmission. Um, and uh, so when you have all this GABA backed up in your brain and your receptors aren't working properly, um, you're not, your body's not able to relax and you're not getting, um, uh, uh, your synapses aren't getting um, the proper transmission of chemicals because GABA is very crucial in transmitting um, uh, uh, neurons uh, and proteins and um, just overall uh, neurochemical, um, neurological function. Um, and, uh, you know, it's definitely, I, I notice an effect on my cognition. Like, I feel almost like, like sometimes I feel like I have the intelligence of a fucking child and my memory is so fucking bad now and my memory was not good to begin with. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like the only things I can do or ketamine if I do it intramuscularly because it just bypasses the blood brain barrier fucking so I get the same results every time and it's like without ketamine I don't know how I would have gotten through all of this um I mean at the same time I have admittedly used a little bit too much of it you know I've noticed effects on my bladder I've already had cystitis um ketamine does not help because it can give you cystitis um like that's the big problem with it, um, uh, and, but I and I also don't consider ketamine a psychedelic. It's not a psychedelic. It's a dissociative. It has psychedelic qualities, but it's not a traditional psychedelic. Um, but I and I can do DMT because DMT, since you're smoking it, it you know just goes straight to your brain. Um, but since my system is so out of whack. You know, um, my central nervous system uh, is, like, very weakened. Um, my metabolism, like, who knows what the hell is going on with my metabolism now. Um, uh, I uh, I don't think I can do macrodoses anymore because, you know, when I did the 2CB and the molly and everything, like, I think I gave myself serotonin syndrome. Um, and not, like, not to the full extreme. Like, a lot of people, when they hear that term, they think of like, you know, like you're violently vomiting, you like one pupil's dilated, the other isn't, and you know, you are essentially fucked. Um, but that's not really the case. Um, most people who have done psychedelics, especially if they've mixed some with MDMA, have probably experienced some degree of serotonin syndrome. Um, you know, uh, like it can just be that feeling of being drained and having a headache afterwards. Um, but uh, I had a migraine, like a killer migraine, through this entire trip. So I just wasn't able to really enjoy it as much as I would ordinarily. Because I'd taken the same 2CB in higher doses with MDMA before. And, uh, you know, it's been fine. Um, and, you know, it wasn't like the trip was overwhelming or anything. I did, a, you know, a, like a fairly, a fairly good dose, like 22 milligrams of 2CB with... 125 milligrams of MDMA, and then I did some ketamine at the peak to really kick it into high gear. Because if any psychedelic mixes well with uh, with uh, 2CB, it, or sorry, with or if any psychedelic mixes well with ketamine, it's 2CB. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, like it lasted for like nine hours, and at that point I was like, oh my god, what the fuck, like. Now I just want to fucking sleep, and so I, you know, had to take a couple extra Valium to try and, like, you know, calm things down a bit, uh, which, you know, it's unfortunate. I don't want to do that. I don't want to take benzos outside of my taper. I don't want to, I don't want to offset my taper, um, which is, you know, because it's already uncomfortable enough as it is, but anyways, like, the 2CB was, like, pretty... Like, I still had a good time on it. Um, you know, I was just watching movies. Like, I watched Blade, and I was like, this is the most badass movie ever fucking made. I watched Blade 2, and um, Tremors fucking had a lot of fun with that. Uh, Evil Dead 2, you know. 
really great movies to watch on psychedelics. Um, and I also did work through some trauma, too, because um, I had an ex who, uh, you know, <laughs> another another one of the exes who was, like, way older than me. I didn't know this because she looked very young. Um, I mean, she wasn't that much older than me compared to some of the other women that I dated when I was younger. Um, uh, she was seven years older than me, but she was a very troubled person. Um, she experienced a lot of sexual abuse from family members, which is... Um, I can only imagine how fucked up that would be. Um, and I'm so thankful I've never experienced anything like that. I've experienced sexual abuse, but not from family members. Um, but she had, you know, like, marks from cutting herself all up and down her arm. And, uh, yeah, uh, we, at the time, were both heroin addicts. And we were both doing heroin, I remember. We did heroin once and screwed for like six hours because I just couldn't come from the heroin. Um, but, uh, and like, honestly, she was like getting kind of like bored after a while. Um, <laughs> and, uh, uh, yeah, anyways, uh, uh, we broke up, me and her. Um, and, uh, it turned out that, uh, like a so-called friend of mine who, after I did uh, a binge with her for like three days, and keep in mind, this was like well over 10 years ago. Um, we binge on cocaine and heroin intravenously for three days. And uh, it's not like we argued or anything, but we just like, I don't know, we just didn't click after a while. Our energy wasn't synergizing very well. Um, we just, yeah, there was this tension between us for some reason. Um, and my friend came over and he was like, are, are you all good, man? And blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, yeah, I don't know, man. She seemed pissed off at me or something like that. And so I left and uh, I was feeling very anxious about the state of our relationship. And uh, sure enough, a couple days later, she breaks up with me and... Um, it turns out that, uh, yeah, she was screwing my friend, and, um, she was in a relationship with him before, and, uh, I didn't know this, but he was physically abusive to her. He would, like, tie her up and, like, beat her and shit like that. Like, really repugnant shit that, you know, like, makes me want to whoop him if I ever see the fucker again. But, uh, like, well, I'll... Like, uh, like, at least six months, at least six months after... Uh, we had broken up, um, she had killed herself. Yeah, just in the shower. She was gone. And, uh, you know, I, I had nothing to do with it. Um, uh, uh, my suspicion is that uh, what happened was, um, my like, she couldn't take the abuse from my friend anymore and, you know, decided to end it. Uh, she was... You know, it was a shame, and I never really worked through that trauma, and I noticed that, like, I, ha I have a lot of trauma dreams now, like, um, like, uh, uh, like, most of them revolve around me not having access to my, like, medication like benzos and methadone, because, like, methadone may, withdrawal may make you feel like you want to die, but it won't kill you, but benzo withdrawal will kill you, so I have dreams of, like, being in a plane crash and fucking not having access to it and being, like, 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 trying to find the, the, the highest cliff where I can fucking just throw myself off. Um, so yeah, pretty fucked up dreams. Um, and so, you know, I'm, I'm as, as awful as it all is, I'm not a suicidal person. Um, never have been. The only time I ever have been was when I thought I had Huntington's and I wanted to do it legally. I wanted to do it through uh, a legal route of euthanasia if the diagnosis was confirmed. Because the doctor who told me I had it said, this is where you are. He showed me a chart of the various phases of Huntington's. And he was like, you're at three and in a year you'll be in diapers and wheelchair. And that was years ago. What was really happening was the SSRIs, they were forcing on me. Like I had no choice in the matter when it came to taking them. Um, <clears throat> were giving me seizures. And they misdiagnosed that. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, going back to, um, 
to my to my ex I've had dreams about her, which is weird because I've never thought about her in a long time. And uh, during the two C B uh, trip, I I kind of worked through that trauma, and so uh, yeah, I mean it was a good time, but I just I like I. I overdid it with the amount of serotonin I was releasing in my brain. I think I gave myself a bit of serotonin syndrome. Um, so, yeah, um, I'm going to have to be very, very careful if I choose to macrodose again. I have no idea what I'm going to do to party now anymore. And, uh, you know, I've just, I've dealt with so much shit that's, like, really um, gravely affected my trust in people, so I, I mean, I don't even really want to go out and party anymore, I just want to stay home, play guitar, work out, play, play video games, um, and, uh, you know, I'm working on, uh, a project that, um, you know, I, I, once they're more fleshed out, I'll tell you about them, because I have kind of a unique idea of, um, sort of blending music and theater, and, um, yeah, I'll leave it at that, uh, but, yeah, so that was, that was that trip, you know, that's fine, uh, like, it was visual wise, and, you know, uh, it wasn't, it wasn't overwhelming or anything, it just sucked to have a migraine through the whole thing, and to have it last that long, and to have to take benzos at the end, just like, I, I always will have benzos with me, when I, uh, when I'm doing psychedelics, uh, at least before I was addicted to benzos, um, because having them was like, it gave me some peace of mind because it was like, I could take these if I ever need to kill the trip because they're very effective at doing that if you are not, um, tolerant to them. Now that I'm tolerant to them, it doesn't really do anything. So I don't have that peace of mind and, um, makes it a lot harder, and also my system is just so sensitive, and, like, when I take drugs orally for some reason, they have, like, really a varying, uh, range of effects on me, um, uh, and it makes dosing very precarious, but, uh, yeah, that's that, uh, um, on a less depressing note, um, I had a really fucking cool, cool, cool DMT trip. Um, you know, again, this is with the cart that I mentioned before, the one hit fucking wonder of like a just boozing, you're gone into hyperspace. And you know, I, I know when I've broken through, I know when I've broken through because, um, like typically like if I'm listening to music, it'll sound like it's like, like like, I'm in a mine shaft or something way at the bottom, and the music is playing, like, way at the top, like, it's so distant, and I'll hear this <laughs> sound, um, and usually, like, a kind of flanger effect, and then visually, um, the visuals will have this, um, it's almost contradictory, um, in how they the speed in which they move, because they appear very glitchy, like, but they're moving super duper fast, and so, um, I did the DMT, and I think someone asked me before, um, if I had ever seen jellyfish, uh, which is apparently a common entity seen on DMT, never had before this experience, um, but immediately I was greeted by jellyfish, these massive fucking jellyfish that look like they had bubbles in them, and they're like, we're gonna take the trauma out of you, and fucking, uh, we're gonna take the inflammation out of your nerves, and they came down, and I could feel them, like, just, like, attaching themselves to me, and it was like this, like, kind of slight electric buzz that was going through me, um, not uncomfortable at all, um, and then I moved into an area with another entity, and it was in this, like, big sort of like room like thing and this wasn't a waiting room this was like you know like i've experienced this almost on every breakthrough where i'm typically um like like usually this is where i go first when i break through as i go into this like big room with this sort of spatial um arrangement that just it just sort of defies logic and physics um because, it, you know, it can look like it's super small, super big, super small, super big, and there's usually an entity in the middle, and it's doing stuff, and, uh, 
this entity um, doesn't match any archetypes. It was very abstruse, um, and that uh, it like it seemed at first like a big sort of like rectangle with uh, um, like lines bordering it that were very flimsy and. By flimsy, I mean like they were sort of moving all over the place and and sort of like kind of gaining curvature sometimes. And um, out of this entity came these sort of slinking tendrils and opened up this sort of vortex thing and wrapped itself around me. And like it's another thing about breaking through on DMT is you know you've broken through if you can feel physically what's happening and um a lot of people have described experiencing very uncomfortable sensations like being ripped apart i mean i feel like i get ripped apart like as soon as i break through but it's not very uncomfortable i find it's just like oh that's ego death my ego is just being fucking torn to shreds um and uh this entity yeah like it like wrapped itself around my head and i it felt like this warm sort of jello and um then I went through it, um, through the vortex that these tendrils had kind of opened up. Um, and uh, I went up to that big dome-like thing that I described before. Um, you know, uh, the, I, I, I've previously used the term Fabergé egg, but I, you know, I, I kind of stopped doing that because that is... Like, you know, people will sort of, I think, conflate that with Terrence McKenna's Machine Elves, um, which, you know, still is something I don't think I've experienced, um, uh, where, you know, he's like, they're like Fabergé eggs, they're like self-dribbling basketballs. Well, no, it's like, what I see is like a dome, and it's not like dribbling up and down, it's just there. And there's usually like a little opening that kind of looks like... Uh, like a doorway you would see in a video game, like Doom or Doom Three or something, or Doom Four or whatever, uh, Doom Eternal, all over. Um, they go like choo 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 choo. I think Halo had something like that too. Um, and usually that's where the trip starts to end for me. Is I'll get up to it, and sometimes if I'm really really fucking gone, I'll go into the dome and like go into some interesting space, but. Like, uh, this time, um, yeah, I was, like, so broken through that, uh, 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 so, like, far gone from objective reality that, uh, I had just rapidly gone up into this dome through the little fucking gate or portal like, opening thing kind of makes it look like a big spaceship, um, and there were, like, I felt like, for one, I felt like I was really high up. I felt like I was sort of almost like standing on the ledge of a skyscraper or something. And all around me were these, what looked like, uh, kind of crowns. But, it, like, if they were made out of, <clears throat> like, a fabric. Um, you know, again, these are very hard experiences to encapsulate and to work, you know? Um, it, they really are. Uh because words just don't do justice to the levels of high strangeness you experience in uh, the DMT realms. Um, now, uh, so, yeah, it was like this series of crowns, and, um, like, I, it, like, it was weird, because I could, feel, I felt like they were attached to, like, a face and a body, but I couldn't quite see them. Um, I was sort of hanging up very high with these big crown-like things around me, and it looked like they had, uh, like, diamonds, um, all the way up and down them, sort of lining, uh, the fabric of these crowns, and, uh, yeah, it was, it was really fucking cool, uh, and that's where the trip started to end, and I started to wake up and move around a bit, and looked in the mirror, and usually when I look in the mirror, like, after a breakthrough, like, um, uh, I'll, I'll do some shadow work, and, um, uh, I, usually what will happen is I'll watch, like, my two eyes become four, and then sort of move into an amalgam of one big eye, but this time it was like my face turned, like, half of it turned, like, black, like, uh, and I looked like a fucking coal miner or something, 
And then um, it, uh, it went from that to like me looking like a Neanderthal almost. Um, uh, very, very interesting stuff, needless to say. Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, oh, uh, one more thing before I end this video. Um, I just want to tell you that I've updated the sledge recipe. Um, now, uh, I am happy to share this with you guys because um, uh, it's, it's a good painkiller, I find, because, you know, after I smoke, like, even half a joint of this stuff, like, like a, like a big joint, you know, kind of like, uh, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Um, like, this may not look like a huge fucking joint, but these things, like, because of everything I put in them, they burn very, very slowly. Uh, like, you know, half of, say, like that get me insanely stoned. So I make sure to smoke like three quarters of it to my dome. Um, and uh, so what I've done is I've taken the original recipe, which it calls for hash, high quality sativa, a little bit of indica, um, and uh, CBD isolate, um, and uh, uh, teeth. But what I've done is because I was tired of like, like, like accidentally inhaling like a tiny bit of keef every time I smoked one um, because my lungs, you know, they're already fucked. I'm already like a, a heavy cigarette smoker, a heavy weed smoker um, for a long time now. And, uh, you know, I want to try to limit as much damage as possible that I can do to my lungs because I already have scar tissue in my right lung from pneumonia uh, that I caught like right at the beginning of COVID. Um, but, uh, yeah, so uh, the sledge, um, what I've done is I've I've substituted live resin for the keef, you know, like this stuff. Um, you know, most people dab it. Um, there's not very much left, so it's kind of hard to see. It just looks like honey, essentially. Um, and uh, you know, I, for one, I'm not, I'm not into dabs. I'm not into bonk dips. I just like I am someone who conflates uh, weed with chilling and mellowing out, uh, not like you know assaulting my senses so that's why i like to smoke joints um but uh yeah so i grind up what i do is i grind up the hash first like a whole bunch and then um uh i'll uh, i'll add in the live resin i'll grind it up some more then i'll add in the herb grind it up and then um you know i'll put it out and then uh, like what I used to do is I'd, I, because I get powdered CBD isolate, I used to just like put the powder into, because I use a magic bullet to grind the stuff up, and you can easily fuck it up if you use the magic bullet for weed, um, if you don't know what you're doing, but I've done it long enough to know what I'm doing, and I haven't fucked it up, ground it up too much, um, in a long, long time, um, probably like 10 years, um, but, uh, in any case, um, yeah, so I'll do that, and then I'll sprinkle the CBD powder on top, and then mix it around. You just take a card or whatever, move it back and forth, and then roll it up. And uh, to make sure I still don't inhale any, like, THC particles, because there's, like, still a lot of keef when you're, like, fucking using this much THC and stuff in um, a formula. Um, I, I make very thick filters, and, like, I'll put in enough so there's just like just tiny tiny perforations um that i can inhale from and uh yeah that's that's the updates to the slide and it's so fucking strong this stuff man i swear like it's it, it it's almost like stronger than ketamine um but that's probably just because i have very high tolerance for ketamine like this stuff is so strong like it makes me trip if i smoke a whole joint to myself um not hard but like a little bit um but uh, yeah, so I don't, I, I don't know where I'm going to go forward when it comes to micro, or sorry, macro dosing, because I do micro dose still. Like, I micro dose today, I micro dose yesterday, I do the Stamets stack, um, but, you know, I keep it to a micro dose. When I first started micro dosing, I knew nothing about it, and I thought that just meant where a macro dose starts, so I took a gram of mushrooms, trip. Lightly, I think it turned out to end like ultimately actually be like for ACO DMT or something. Um, this was from like a dispensary that was selling them for a while, they get, they all got shut down the independent dispensaries. But um, this felt more like for ACO DMT, anyways, it wasn't like 
like mushrooms, um, like dried cubes or whatever it was, a gummy that said a thousand milligrams of psilocybin. And, um, you know, I was tripping like a little bit and snowing. And I actually had a really good time, but that's not a microdose. That is not a microdose. A microdose, you know, you're not supposed to trip. You're supposed to just kind of have a little bit of a psychedelic headspace. So what I usually do is um, I mix um, 0.1, uh, like ideally penis envy mushrooms, but like right now all I have is golden teachers. Um, so I uh, weigh out, you know, a point sometimes if I've done it for like, you know, three, four days, um, and I built a little bit of a tolerance, I'll go up to like, you know, uh, 0.15 or 0.17. Like yesterday, I think I did like 0.2 and like I was actually tripping a little bit. Um, and I use a buckload of niacin, probably more niacin than most people would be comfortable with. But I think niacin does help with the transmission of GABA in the brain. And it also feels like it really detoxes my body because niacin does something called the niacin flush. And uh, you can see that I'm a little bit red. I, so I've still got it <coughs> going on a little bit because I took it about, I don't know, a little over an hour ago. And it takes I think, about two hours to wear off for me. Um, but uh, it feels like like you it almost kind of like having hives like whoosh, but not like not that uncomfortable i mean it just feels like you get these big flashes of heat and they're kind of itchy and you get a little red and it's like blotchy and stuff like that but uh otherwise um i actually i don't mind it i actually kind of enjoy it uh so like where Stamet says I think to use like 100 milligrams or like 50 milligrams, I use like 200. Um, and I'll take typically lion's mane uh, with cordyceps because the cordyceps I find give me a little bit of energy. And like even microdose of mushrooms, like uh, same with macrodoses, will have this sort of sedative effect on my thoughts that I, I it just I don't really jive with that well. It just it kind of is at odds with my thoughts because my thoughts as you can probably tell my my stream of consciousness is like rapidly firing constantly you know i have very bad add um you know i have like bordering on autism uh levels of add um as i've said before i was misdiagnosed with autism as a teenager one of many misdiagnoses but um yeah, it helps. I mean, I still take dextrin too, um, which, you know, I, I wouldn't advise most people do, but I find it works for me anyways. Um, and the microdosing does help to, A, put me in a bit of a flow state, help me with concentration, help, it helps my energy levels, I find. Um, and because uh, I think I think the dextrin offsets any of the drowsiness that I may get from the mushrooms. Um, and I find myself much more productive, like, you know, as I said, I've been, you know, doing a lot. Unfortunately, it hasn't really, a lot A lot of what I've been doing hasn't really been paying off, but, um, you know, I'm still, I'm really, really trying to fucking make it in this world. Um, and, you know, I've been playing a lot of guitar. Uh, I, I would, uh, like, I'm recording this, uh, this video on my laptop. Because um, my iPhone is just like that. Like, I have to upgrade the fucking storage because it doesn't matter how much shit I delete, like, it'll still say iCloud's full. You can't record videos. It sucks because that's how I make most of my videos. Because the audio on this laptop is not great. Um, like, I can't do guitar covers on this laptop, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> probably tell it sounds like my guitar is under fucking water um when i use this laptop so um i've recorded a bunch of stuff on um 
like one of my parents' Microsoft tablets. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, um, it just doesn't seem to be fucking starting up now. Um, and I've got all these videos of me doing song covers that I really would like to upload. But I can't, um, uh, at least as it stands. Um, Unfortunately, yeah, the one guitar cover that I did upload, um, the Dancing Nancy's one, with my new guitar, Carmelita here, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful guitar, um, that I got for a fucking excellent price, uh, uh during Boxing Day sales, um, at Long and Quaid, uh, I think I did, I, like, I was pretty proud of how I did, uh, for that cover, um, but, like I and this is how I remember covered being on YouTube ten years ago, um, is that people would play the song in the background and then they'd play along to it for the most part. You know, not everyone was like that, but like I kind of have to hear the music to play along with it um, in time. I find uh, so I yeah for the other covers I did record, which I may not be able to access. Um, unfortunately, again, uh, I would just wear headphones and listen to the music and play the song because I got copyright strike for just like very faintly playing it in the background. And uh, I don't know why that's copyright because that it, like, you know, I like isn't isn't and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not super familiar with the YouTube terms of service, but um, isn't it like fine if you are taking creative liberties with what you're using, which is exactly what I was doing. Like I was improv in like the beginning. Because even if you play a song beat for beat, you're still like kind of making it your own thing because it'll be your voice, your style of playing and all, all that jazz. Um, but uh, yeah, it got copyright strike, and I don't think I can afford to get another one because I think that would probably spell the end of my channel. Um, but um, yeah, uh, I I apologize for being gone for so long. Oh, and uh, yeah, um, before I forget, um, Jonah Charlie man, fucking you dude, like seriously, a solid dude, solid supporter of the channel. Um, I really appreciate you. Um, you, I, you sent me a message just asking, like, you know, what's up, dude? I haven't heard from you in a while. Is everything all good? And, you know, I was very depressed, and I didn't respond, so... Or, well, I, di I, I did respond eventually, but I don't know if the email actually sent or not. So do let me know if you got that or not. Um, uh, I, I have to double-check my email. Okay, I'm kind of locked out of it. Just, I've just been having problems with technology left and right. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, um, I'm going to try to make some more videos. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, I like I won't have much psychedelic content to talk about, I don't think. Um, like, if I do a macro dose in the near future, um, and, but, like, remember that I actually, like, kind of rely on macro doses to help with my depression. And like even yeah, with the two CV, even though I feel like I overdid it with the amount of serotonin that was released, um, I still had the afterglow the day after. I still have the afterglow. It's been I think three days since I did it. Like I still feel um, like 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 substantially better energy wise, um, uh, productivity wise, all that good stuff than I did before. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so if I do a macro dose again, what I'm probably gonna do is um, start with something light, like maybe 150 milligrams of ALLID, um, which I love. I personally love. Um, I know Adam from Psych Substance made a video saying it was like the ugliest psychedelic he ever experienced. I do not know where the hell like that uh, sort of trip he described. Uh, like the weird, like visual, he said his wife looked like this, like Medusa figure or whatever. Like, I've never had that. Like, I almost find it like more colorful and beautiful than LSD. Um, like, I remember watching uh, uh, Mashima uh, Life in Four Chapters on it, and that was like fucking a magical experience. Um, but um, yeah, so I'll have to start out with that. Certainly not doing any MDMA, so no flips, unfortunately. Um, maybe some, maybe I'll try some 4-HO DBT because I've got a lot of that. Um, and, uh, I find 4-HO DBT to be essentially like, like, uh, indistinguishable from DBT itself. Um, uh, but DBT itself, I, it's just a drug that like, unless I can find a, a form where you can like smoke it because like, I've heard there was this like church call that was like an offshoot of like the Navajo uh, church when they, uh, uh, you know, were facing legal issues because mescaline was uh, considered a controlled substance and peyote was their sacrament. And also, you know, peyote has been way over harvested and is now like, like facing extinction, unfortunately, which is why like I, I refuse to buy it um, and do it. Um, if I'm gonna do it, I'll do San Pedro or something like that. I've got a fuckload of San Pedro, but I don't think my system would be able to handle something like that anytime soon. So I may start like with a little. Uh, uh, oh yeah, sorry, I did not to derail, but um, yeah, the the this was like an offshoot of that church, and they said they used like all sorts of psychedelics um to get uh, uh like religious experiences, and like the Navajo uh, people have been uh very very successful in their use of peyote in treating alcoholism and mental illness and stuff like that like it's actually beyond impressive and they've been doing this for you know longer than we know um but uh yeah so this church their main sacrament was uh, apparently a smokable form of dpt now i've done a, a bunch of research into finding smokable forms of it and it apparently you can like cook it up like a crack rock or something and smoke it because I would really like to experience the breakthrough, but the thing is, when you're doing it in any other way, uh, that breakthrough is going to last for like at least a good two hours. Um, when I've done DPT before, it's always been snorting it, um, and you have to snort the like like seventy five milligrams of this like fucking thick powder that has like the consistency of flour. The last time I did it. My sinuses were clogged for like three days. So it was just like, eh, this is just like not worth it. And like, I've had like the, you know, classical DPT weirdness. Um, I've had that experience. I haven't had the full breakthrough, but 4-HO DPT, even though it still has that flowery, unpleasant consistency, uh, you only need to use like, like 25 milligrams um, uh, as opposed to 75. So, you know, that helps. And also I find there's like little headspace compared to most tryptamines. Um, like for me, tryptamines are just, uh, I love them. They're like, like visually, they're some of the most interesting psychedelics, uh, maybe the most interesting. Um, but uh, I just don't jive very well with the way, and you can look this up on Psychonaut Wiki. I don't know the name of uh, of, of what this uh, symptom is, uh, like the the medical name, scientific name, whatever, what have you. But look up like for Homet, for ACO DMT, for HO DMT, whatever. Go down, um, and you'll see the effects it has on you. And one of them is uh, a cycling every hour of thoughts from fast to slow, fast to slow, fast to slow, um, and I find that, um, yeah, that like groggy sedative or sedating effect that it gives me, like, it just, it just like, it doesn't, it's not at the same speed as my thoughts. And so I kind of have to force my thoughts to slow down. Um, and so oftentimes in the past, I would take like very small doses of bentos, 
before going in because I would, uh, especially if it is a longer, like with DPT and stuff like that, I didn't really have to do that because it was only like two hours. Um, but uh, with the stuff like 4-HCO DMT, where it's like three to six hours or psilocybin mushrooms, where, you know, same duration and psilocybin mushrooms have this effect more than anything else I find, but that's probably because there's like multiple alpha alkaloids in the mushrooms themselves. I would love to try um, just the, uh, the extract or even synthetic like 4-HO DMT. I mean, I don't even know. Like, I'm sure people have synthesized it. Um, but um, yeah, like I just, uh, you know, and I can't, I can't take, you know, additional benzos anymore. Like, and it doesn't do anything really either because of my massive benzo tolerance. Like I'm on like a pretty high dose of them. Um, and that's usually why I, I've been mixing MDMA when I do uh, psychedelics, like, like long lasting ones uh, in macro dose, uh, uh, doses. Um, Cause I find the MDMA takes a lot of the edge off, makes it more euphoric and enjoyable. Um, but because uh, I can't really, you know, kill a trip because I have this benzo tolerance. So, um, you know, that that makes me, even though I, I, I know I'm like not going to have a bad time, it just makes me more, more anxious. So I don't know what the future holds because um, I just know that I'm going to keep striving. Uh, like I've got this, as I said, bullshit legal issue that I have to deal with that if I don't do so, if I don't see a judge in the next 30 days, um, some of my civil rights will be violated for the rest of my life. So, you know, I swear, once I get off this methadone and benzos, I need to fucking leave at the very least this province if not this country um because the thing is like my medical file is a it's super inaccurate um and b it like really makes me out to be this like monstrous fucking like psychotic mentally ill person because like the one episode of psychosis i had from shooting cocaine which like that will do it to anyone doesn't matter how sane you are um like, I, I got psychosis for about six hours from that. Um, that's the only time I've experienced uh, psychosis in my life, and it was scary as hell. And that was part of what stopped, or got me to stop shooting coke. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I'll still be doing DMT. I'll still be fucking smoking the sledge and, you know, taking Phoenix Tears, which, you know, Phoenix Tears are strong as fuck. For those of you who don't know, Rick Simpson Oil is, um, it's a ratio of, um, four parts THC to one part CBD. And it's like a black oil. What I'll usually do is I'll put it on sublingual and melatonin and then just put it under my tongue. Um, you can take it orally too. Um, but, uh, again, my system is so funky, wonky that like, I just have like very, um, sort of unexpected reactions, whether it be like, like the, it feels like I've taken less than the dose I've taken or way more than like a small dose I've taken. Um, like I try not to take things orally. But, um, yeah, I mean, Phoenix Sears will still make you trip because it's a lot of THC. Like, um, 
Like I probably take about like 100 milligrams of THC with like 25 milligrams of CBD every time I do it at least. And I'll smoke a fucking joint of sledge too. Because I have to like fucking knock myself out to get any sleep these days. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, I'll continue to do DMT, I'll continue to do ketamine, you know, I'm going to cut back on it a little bit, uh, try to make it like, like, you know, like no more than like once a day. Um, cause for one, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just economically not vi viable for me. Like I can't afford, uh, like on disability to buy ketamine, um, because it's the same price as cocaine now. It's like, like usually a hundred dollars a gram at least. Um, and that's partially why I do the intramuscular shots, which I don't advise anyone to do unless you really, really, really know what you're doing. Um, uh, I've had no problems, uh, doing that. I mean, I have overdone it sometimes, um, and anesthetized myself, but usually I am like already prone, lying down, I'm fine. I just realized, oh shit, I've anesthetized myself, I can't move, and then fucking have the crazy K-hole effect. But, you know, that's, that's fine. I'm used to that. Like, I'm used to that. Um, uh, uh, but, I mean, ketamine, the thing is, like, even though, like, I, I feel like when I do it, and I get to that level of a dose, that, like, I have just witnessed something fucking insanely profound when I come out the other side, like, my recall of what happened is so limited, it's like, like, maybe I'll remember, like, three sort of snapshots of what I saw. Um, uh, but, uh, yeah, like, uh, like, like, I remember, like, the last time I K-holed really hard, which is, like, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty tough for me to do that now, because I have such a high tolerance to it. Um, uh, I, I remember that it was, like, I had the Tibetan Book of the Dead, like, sort of form of dying, which is, or ego death, but, um, like, you know, ego death is indistinguishable from dying when you experience it. Uh, you think you're dying, or it seems like you're dying. I mean, I, I know, though, that, like, oh, I've taken a drug, I'm not actually dying. But, yeah, I don't remember a lot of what happened, but I remember, um, that I, uh, went to the place where souls go when they are in a state of non-existence it wasn't a heaven it wasn't a hell it was just a place where it looked like a bunch of mandalas like white mandalas that were like moving around kind of like um i don't know if you've ever seen like sand being placed on a speaker and then like the sand will move into different patterns with the the vibrations of the speaker uh the mandala things kind of look like that and how they change and uh i remember it being like the yin Yim Yam, I think that's what they call it in the Book of the Dead state, where, like, you reach this place, um, you know, if you've accepted the fact that you're dead and that you are leaving this earth and restarting anew, you go to this area where you essentially become, like, like a sperm or something, and uh, you go out and in this out-of-body experience, look at all these couples having sex, and you choose which one you want to go into to be reborn. And I remember just, like, I ended up in the space, and they are like, you shouldn't be here, and they kicked me out, um, and I ended up back in my body. Um, that's all I really recall, but, um, yeah, I mean, I don't find ketamine to be the most profound thing. Um, I like using it on top of macrodoses of, of hallucinogen. I used to use it with DMT all the time because it would help with my flight anxiety, but then I found that my trips would suffer from the same consequence I just described of k and where... It's like, holy fuck, I feel like I just experienced a lot. Um, like, I just went through infinity. Um, uh, or, like, you know, like, I've had experiences, uh, heavy K-holes, where, like, I, it's like the whole universe gets sucked into, like, a black hole. And, like, there's nothing left but, like, it's like a reverse Big Bang. And um, there's nothing left but, like, the color black and the color white and me. Um, and, you know, I like, like, some of those experiences have actually kind of scared me a little bit, um, because I, I didn't, like, I didn't quite know what was happening, but, um, uh, you know, then I come out of it and be like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, I'm so happy to be here, so happy to be alive again, and then, you know, an hour later, I'll be like, oh, wait, yeah, my existence here is really shitty, fuck, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, anyways, um, 
so I like yeah when I do DMT and ketamine together I found that I would forget so much of the DMT trip um and it just I don't, I don't want that it feels like a waste of DMT um but uh yeah I mean I'll I'll keep you guys posted I guess on any trips that may come in the near future um uh, I'll try to upload these videos of me playing the guitar and singing because I've been working very fucking hard. Mind you, I'm not a great singer. Um, I just started singing. I've just started playing the acoustic guitar and like taking a different approach than just lead guitar type playing. Um, so, you know, uh, I really like I am. Trust me, I'm well aware of the fact that I am so far from like good at either of these things but it's a work in progress and i'm like proud enough to actually share it with people which is something that i don't think i i, I have would have ever been able to say before um i've always been very insecure about my guitar playing um but um yeah this video is coming to about an hour now so i'm going to uh you know crimp this off before I get into another tangent, but um, please do tell me, did like what what kind of content do you want to hear? Do you want to hear, um, you know, more trip reports? I mean, again, they're probably going to be limited to like like DMT and ketamine and you know, so on and so forth. Uh, do you want to hear some stories from my my crazy fucked up past? I told you pretty much the worst of them already. Um. Do you want to hear some, uh, like, film analyses? Like, I've done very deep dives on films. Like, I've written, like, you know, essays up upwards of 3,000 words um, um, uh, analyzing, like, David Lynch films and stuff like that, or Tarkovsky films. Um, I think I've uploaded a video um, where I, I read my essay on Solaris, the Tarkovsky version. Um, but uh, I think that's like one of the videos that was like 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 the lowest view count on my channel. Not that my videos get much like viewership at all. Uh, you know, the, the, those of you who do watch, and especially those of you who watch all the way to the end, you are fucking serious champions. Um, your patience is like beyond admiration because listening to me fucking go on like this, um, I could only imagine being on the other side. It's probably really annoying. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I feel like, you know, between all the tangential, frenetic, fucking, like, just, just, just pinball fucking narratives that I string together through these videos, just bing, 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 bing. Like, it's probably, like, it's probably insufferable to a lot of people, but, um, at the same time, there are grains of sort of interesting things, I think, you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything, I, I, like, I'm, again, I'm not a fucking genius, I'm not a fucking super smart dude, I just have had a lot of crazy experiences that not a lot of people actually experience themselves, a lot of hardship, um, and a lot of interesting sort of trips and stuff like that, and, um, you know, I think I've lived an interesting life, and I plan to continue to do so. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just, I'm struggling a lot right now. I'm struggling a lot with this Benzo stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, like I, I am, I don't think I'm at risk of doing anything bad. Like, you know, I'm certainly not suicidal, I'm certainly not like inclined to self-harm, certainly not of any desire to do hard drugs. Um, but, uh, like, you know, it's just hard. It's just, it's just tough to, to endure, to grip my teeth and know that this is going to be at least a year of just getting worse and worse and worse and worse. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, I can update you as things go along. Um, I can tell you how microdosing is going. I can tell you how my university classes are going, what it's like to be a disabled person and be kind of persecuted by the world. Um, you know, uh, that's, that's like main, the main issue I'm dealing with right now in life. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyways, as I said, crip it off. Talk to you later. Stay beautiful.